Yeah. So let's, let's take a step back. Cause I, I agree with you 100% with what you just said for so many, our steady state is stressed and anxious that we don't even realize it. Right. We're, we're, I look, I love drinking coffee. I'll sip on coffee throughout the day. I probably have one cup over 12 hours. Right. Um, but there are people that are so overtired because they're not sleeping at night that they then stimulate using coffee, tea, worse energy drinks, chocolate, right? These different stimulants that keep us going. Your brain's not functioning correctly. It's not moving in and out of the different brainwave states correctly, which leads to dysregulation of your nervous system. We'll talk about those two things separately. We can talk about the brain if you want, but let's dive into, as, as you asked, um, how we interpret the world around us. So let's keep this really, really simple and let's build into it because I think it's worth the conversation. And, and if you're listening and you're not sure if you're in that state, unfortunately, unless you're tending to yourself, you're probably in that state. So let's think first about the brain and the body and the nervous system. The nervous system, how it interprets the world around us is through the five senses, touch, taste, sound, smell, hearing, okay? The five senses. And your brain is really just sitting in a black hole, just looking at electrical signals. And those electrical signals that are coming are coming through the ocular nerve, the auditory nerve, right? They're coming through um, all the mechanoreceptors in our skin. And it's how we interpret the world around us. When your body, when your nervous system interprets a series of signals as a threat to your well being, that threat to your well being could be physical, which is tend to, tends to be what people talk about, like a saber toothed tiger chasing you. I don't have any saber toothed tigers here in Vegas, but I got really shady parts of the strip that I don't want to be walking down on a dark alley by myself at night. Right. Um, there's, there's parts of New York city that I wouldn't want to be walking by myself at night, Brooklyn, right. The Bronx, that spidey sense that goes off. That is your sympathetic nervous system response. That is your, that is a series of signals that your senses are interpreting as a threat. A physical threat is one thing. That's what most people accompany. However, your body cannot tell the difference between an emotional threat, a mm -hmm. spiritual threat, a mental threat, or a physical threat, or a financial threat for that matter, which might trigger a multitude, okay? And regardless of what that threat looks like, whether it's coming from the spiritual, mental, emotional, nutritional, even an outside force, right? There's that immune response, which, so you could talk about a nutritional threat. Um, the body only has one response. And that is a sympathetic nervous system response that is otherwise known as fight or flight. And it's, it is basically survival mode for your body. It's meant to be a short stint, two hours, 45 minutes less. It is designed specifically to fight or run. That's why they call it fight or flight. So it's really designed to save your life and get you out of uh, a life-threatening situation. Now, again, if it's a physical threat, that makes a lot of sense. Right. I think of a mom that uh, who's even as I'm about to say this, I'm getting emotional, even just thinking about it because I have my daughter. Daughter slips, rolls underneath the car, car falls on her. And mom has this mysterious, miraculous strength where she picks up the car, holds it with one hand, grabs the baby, brings her out, drops the car and goes on her way. Well, how do you do that? You do that because of the sympathetic nervous system response, fight or flight and adrenaline, adrenaline and cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. We get a spike of it in the morning when we wake up. And if something stressful happens, we get another spike. Keeps you hyper-focused on whatever that threat is. The adrenaline shifts and diverts energy from maintenance tasks in the body, which we'll talk about in a second, to the major muscle groups of the body so that you can fight or run. Again, you're not meant to hold that car up for a half hour. You're meant to hold that car up for a short period of time so that you can get baby out or child or whatever and then be on your way. And then you start to shake. You start to shake as the adrenaline and the cortisol begins to be absorbed and, and um, dissolved, if you will, outside of the body. It's meant for a really short sprint. Now, for that short period of time when the adrenaline and cortisol are flowing through your body, your body needs that energy from somewhere. So the most expensive energetic use in the body is the brain. The second most expensive energy driver or user in the body is digestion. So when you drift into that fight or flight, your body turns off rational thinking. I don't have to think rationally. I just have to focus on saving my life. And the cortisol keeps you hyper-focused. So you're not drifting from topic to topic. It turns off digestion. So now all of a sudden 
it doesn't matter how fabulous or fantastic, although I will say the scalar waves are something a little different, which I want to learn more about. But now it doesn't matter how organic, how clean, how wonderful the supplement you're taking is. If you're stressed and anxious, your body is turning off your digestion potentially, mm -hmm. and you're not absorbing food anyway. Turns off your immune system because I don't have to defend against bacteria or viruses. I need to save my life. And of course, it turns off your reproductive organs. Those are the four big ones. There's other stuff that happens, but it has to accumulate that energy and divert it from something. So if you're in fight or flight, your body is not maintaining itself. It is not restoring itself. It is not taking care of itself. It is instead in survival mode. And what I want to pound on that on a nutritional basis when you just said it shuts off your digestion. When you're in survival mode, your body's like, okay, are we going to get into a famine? I need to lower my caloric oh, yeah. burn. I need to gain weight. I need to put an extra layer Store of fat, fat in my yeah. body to protect my organs. And so you're wondering where this unexplained weight gain has come after this pandemic. Well, it's not just the pandemic. It's not just the toxic um, toxicity in our environment and our food and the processed foods, but it's this level of chronic stress and our body's like, okay, where's the next tiger? Um, and so I just wanted to- And then you start that. looking for it, right? So then when a threat, look, a threat could come from a tiger. Look, if there was a news article that a tiger escaped from the, you know, from the zoo and it's roaming the streets, yeah, of course you're looking for a tiger. But when your nervous system gets on edge, your brain goes into survival mode. Your brain really wants to keep you alive. And how does it keep you alive? By looking for threats. It doesn't keep you alive by looking for, you know, palm trees and beautiful beaches. When it finds it, it's like, oh, this is brilliant. But even when you're sitting underneath a palm tree at the beach, your brain is actually still looking for threats. Your nervous system is actually still looking for threats. It's how we survive. So this, this programming, if you will, that is laying underneath our subconscious is this, I need to stay alive. And when we have news agencies that are reporting what they're reporting and the propaganda that's being thrown at us, the music that they're using, the frequencies that they're using, there's a reason why they call it a program <laughs> on tell a vision, telling you a vision. It's not your vision. It's their vision that they're telling to you and programming you through their programs to think what they want you to think. And by the way, the sounds and the frequencies that they use, dun, 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 dun. The newscaster I think of is Wolf Blitzer, bless his beautiful heart. He's practically shouting at you. That shouting is eliciting a response to your nervous system that keeps you addicted to his voice. <laughs> Most people don't even realize that. So with a little bit of education, you start to realize exactly what's happening around you and you start to become mindful of what's happening around you. And with just like you can condition these muscles uh, through working out in the gym, you can also condition your nervous system and you can regulate your dysregulated nervous system by using tools like the tools that InHarmony creates and many other great companies that are out there doing incredible things. Sound and vibration captivates the mind, body, and spirit. It guides you into what I'm going to call a meditative state, but it's really just a slower brainwave state, which calms and relaxes the nervous system, which allows you to condition your nervous system to spend more time calm and relaxed to take the emotional triggers, the mental triggers, the spiritual triggers, and not elicit the same response as a physical threat. Which means if you're walking in the mall and a gunshot goes off after using our technology for years and being cool, calm, and collected, your nervous system is still going to react to that threat. It is going to react differently. And it is going to keep you cool, calm, and collected longer so that you have your rational thinking and you can be more aware of your surroundings, but ultimately you're still going to have access to that fight or flight response. We can't take that away entirely. And I can't change the outside world. I can only help you make better decisions of what the outside world is going to look like for you and what situations and environments you're going to put yourself in by giving yourself more of that cool, calm, and collected outlook on life versus being stressed and anxious on a regular basis.